Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Hey, today this video I want to talk about an odd problem that I've run across a few times where oil from the um, vacuum pump for the harvest right, oil has actually been sucked into the vacuum line. This only happens at the end of the final dry cycle uh, when there's still a vacuum and the pump turns off and you're not there to open the, the valve to let air back into the chamber. First off, I'm gonna roll some footage of the couple of times that I actually caught this on videotape. Um, now, I've had the pump located in several different locations. I had it on the cart itself on the top. The first time I saw this, I, I contacted Harvest Right, explained the situation, asked them if there was a one-way valve that I could uh, put on there to uh, prevent that from happening. And they said, um, you know, it's really not a problem unless it gets all the way up to the actual chamber in the freeze dryer and at that point they recommend that you put the pump down below so anyway I've done that but I've actually seen it happen again when the pump was down below and this is so intermittent um, I've been trying to figure out what the scenario was that would cause this was it a long run that had a really really low vacuum pressure or was it that combined with the amount of time that the pump was turned off at the end of the cycle? Now I contacted um, the guys from JB Industry, the people that make this pump. That's the standard unit that comes with all the freeze dryers. And uh, I asked them today, you know, is there a solenoid that they would recommend? What I'm thinking about doing is putting a solenoid that would be you know, activated. It would be closed normally on that vacuum line. I'd mount it right on the pump. And then when the pump is on, the solenoid would turn on and open that vacuum line. And he said, you know, there is a one-way valve built into the pump. You should never see that problem. And so uh, we talked about it, and it turns out that there is a one-way valve. It's actually built in here below this fitting. So inside of here is a Teflon ball and it sits in the pump normally. Um, and then at the top of the, the bottom, at the, at the bottom of this fitting is an O-ring seal. And what happens is when there's a vacuum up here, okay, that goes to the harvest right, and the pump turns off, this ball that sits in here, it sits down about an inch, um, it pops up and it goes against the O-ring seal that's inside of here, and that shuts off and is supposed to prevent oil from coming out of here under a vacuum condition. So um, the technician recommended that I take this all apart and take a look, make sure that the, the O-ring seal is not damaged, that there's not debris in there, that the ball isn't stuck for whatever reason. Um, and so the rest of this video is about what I found, how to take this apart, what I found, and um, what the solution is. So anyway, let me just reiterate, uh, this is not a problem with the Harvest Right freeze dryer. It is actually a problem with the pump, and it's a problem with my pump, hopefully not yours. Um, but if you've run into this situation, this is what's going on. You're not going crazy. Um, all right, so let's roll the rest of this video. Now, uh, there are a couple things about this. First, um, because of this piece here, this can't rotate. It runs into uh, the handle. Okay, so the handle has to come off. Uh, but before the handle comes off, you see the handle would hit about right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off everything from here up. And then I can take the handle off. And then I can spin this fitting around and take uh, this piece off and inside of there is where the ball valve is. To get the handle off you have to hit on this a few times with a rubber mallet and you want to make sure that you don't hit this plastic part because you don't want to break that. Anyway once you've hit it a couple of times uh, maybe a quarter of a turn then you can very easily take this off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll get this piece off next and uh, take a look. Alright it looks like the ball is in there. Um, I'm going to try to get a piece of tubing set up 
um, and then just kind of suck that up uh, with a piece of tubing like a little pickup tool. So I want to pull that out and take a look at it. Um, and I've taken a quick look at this. This you probably can't see very well. I'm going to take it in next door get some light on it. But um, I didn't see anything on the O-ring seal, um, but it was covered with oil, so I wiped it. And of course that might have dislodged whatever that was. So anyway, um, we'll get that ball out and take a look. What ended up working was I took some tubing like this and I hooked it up to the shop vac. Okay, so... Um, and then powered that on and just went down like this and sucked that ball right up. So that worked out really well. I found the problem and it turns out to be the, the ball that is part of the check valve. This particular one has some surface um, irregularities. Um, and I've, I've got a microscope hooked up here. I'm going to go ahead and roll some footage where I rolled the ball around and you can see that the ball has... Um, the ball has divots in it. Kind of looks like the, the surface of the moon. It's got craters, but it's also like it's got skyscrapers. So there are pieces of nylon that are actually poking away um, that are attached to the ball, but they're pointing out. Okay, so there, there are bumps and there are divots. Um, and so that kind of explains why this issue is so erratic. I haven't been able to duplicate it because it turns out the ball has these imperfections and it's just kind of the luck of the draw whether those imperfections are going to be sitting on the o-ring seal and whether they're going to uh, impede a good seal or allow a decent seal to happen. I also uh, with the microscope looked at the o-ring seal um, in this other part and I didn't see anything really obvious wrong with this, even with the, the microscope. Uh, but I'm certainly going to replace the O-ring at the same time, since everything is all apart. You can see how that sits on that O-ring seal. So if there are imperfections, it's not going to make um, a good seal on that O-ring. And that's why this issue pops up once in a while, not all the time. Uh, I contacted JB Industries, and I think they're going to send me a replacement one. Uh, but I also found them on eBay. Uh, apparently, these are, this is a, kind of a common part, and they use it as a uh, roller bearing in some applications. So um, I'm probably going to just order some of those. They're, they're not too expensive, so it would be kind of nice to have them around just in case. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Um, what I did was I knocked off all the high points on this with my fingernail, and then I used a Scotch-Brite uh, like Yay to just make sure that all of those high spots are gone, and they are now. Um, they're still, the divots are still there, but I looked at it with the microscope and all the high points are gone. So anyway, and then what I'm going to do with the O-ring here is I've, I've got a set here of replacements. This one happens to be uh, very close to the same size, but it's not exact. So what I did was I pulled this O-ring out and I flipped it over and put it back in. Um, so I've got a, a fresh surface here on this one. And then when the replacements come, I'll go ahead and change that over. I've got a bunch of stuff in the freezer that I want to get freeze-dried, and I don't want to be waiting for a week for a ball. So um, I'm probably going to post this video. At least you'll know what the problem is if you run into this. And, um, you know, maybe I'll do an update when I install the, the solenoid. But uh, for now, Epicenter Brian, signing out.